Okay, in this section we're going to take a look at the last sampling technique that we will be discussing in this course, that being a stratified random sample. Now, in a stratified random sampling, the idea is to partition the population into appropriate strata. Strata is just another word for group. Now, the strata need to be homogeneous, meaning similar within each group, and heterogeneous, meaning different between each group, group similar and different relative to whatever it is that we're actually dealing with, what this topic of the um, research is about. Now, once we divide our population into these different stratas, then we go ahead inside each strata and we conduct either a simple random sample or a systematic random sample within each strata. Now, when I say homogeneous and heterogeneous, Let's take a look at an example as to how we break them into clearly groups that are similar within and dissimilar between. All right, here's an example. Suppose you're going to take a political poll. You're going to go out and do a poll of registered voters, voters in a particular community. Now, let's just suppose that this community has a population of 31,000 602 registered voters. And your sample, you can afford to take a sample of 180. Afford meaning you're paying somebody to do it, or time-wise, that's all you can do, or whatever, whatever the case may be. Your sample is going to be 180. Now, if you're trying to figure out what's going to happen in the community uh, for an upcoming election, you really need to make sure, do the best of your ability, to make sure that each group is represented properly. And the group specifically that first come to my mind is Democrats, Republicans, and maybe Independents, or maybe just other. It could be that the other groups are so small, you just want to clump them together rather than breaking it down further. You could break down further in terms of age groups and ethnicity, um, socioeconomic status and how much money you're making. There, there are all kinds of things that you could stratify by. But the biggies would be, in this case, political party. If you took a simple random sample, it's possible that 95% of your sample were Republican, and hence more likely to say they're going to vote for Republican, right, and eliminating the Democrats. Or the other way around, you could have a large percentage, 90-95%, Democrats in your sample, which obviously would eliminate the Republicans, even though voter-wise they may be close to 50% each or 60-40 or something like that. So see, you can end up with this uh, unknowing bias uh, by the sampling technique itself. So you want to make sure you want to try to avoid that. Okay, now here's a situation. Let's just suppose in this particular community, um, the Democrats, there are 13,000 481 registered Democrats in this particular community. Uh, the Republicans, let's just say, have 17,294 registered voters. And because the other groups were so small, we clumped them together, and there are actually 827 others. Now, the question is, how on earth am I going to figure out how many to sample from each? Well, if you reach for your calculator, you will see that for the Democrats, I'm going to write N sub D. This is sample size D for the Democrats. The number I want to sample is going to be based on um, 180 times 1,300, I'm sorry, 13,481 divided by uh, 31,000. 602. You see, this right here, this proportion, makes up the proportion of the whole that the Democrats make up. So in this particular example, this value right here is actually 0.4266. So what I'm saying is I want 42.66 of my entire sample, the 180, to come from the Democrats. That's going to help ensure that the Democrats are proportionately, properly represented here. And that number actually comes out to be 76.7880. Now, similarly, for the Republicans, N sub R is going to equal 180 times 
when I look at the ratio for the Republicans, 17,294 divided by the 31,602, that's 54%. So 0.5472, that gives me a number of 98.4960. And N sub O, the others, um, was 2%. Roughly 180 times 0 0.0262, which gives me 4.7160. Now, if you think about this for a second, we're going to actually contact people. Can I contact 76.788 people? No. What I'm going to do here is, I'm going to, is I will use the proper rules of rounding. I'm not going to truncate like I did in the, in the systematic. This is going to go to... Uh, let's see, let's write it up here, uh, probably right here. N sub D, the number of Democrats I'm actually going to contact is going to be 77 out of this group of 13,000 plus. N sub R, the number of Republicans I'm going to contact, see 98.496, um, I'm going to round this down um, to simply 98. And the number of others... 4.71, that's going to go up, I'm going to end up getting 5. Now, when I add these up, I will actually end up, well, let's see, let me grab my calculator real quick and make sure I didn't make a mistake here. But see, 77 plus 98 plus 5 equals 180. So this totaled 180. Now, that may not always happen. As an example, let's go back to the Republicans. If you'd have gone out here to round, this would have brought the 9 up, which would have brought the 4 up to 5, which would have brought me up to 99. In that case, I would have had 99 Republicans rather than 98, and I would have had 181 total rather than 180. Every now and then, that sort of thing can happen. What you want to do is when they don't add up to, to the number you're supposed to, which because of rounding, that can happen. It's, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just that's the way it goes. Um, what I tend to do is I go to my largest group. See, I'm one over... I would go to my largest group, and that's where I would subtract one from to get me back to the number I want. The reason being, if I subtract one from the largest group, it'd have a much less impact than if I subtracted one from, say, the small group. Okay, if I go from 5 to 4, that's a 20% change. That, that's a big change. If I go from 99 to 98, that's a slightly more than 1% change. It's not that significant. So now I have the actual values or the number that will sample from each group. It's now a simple matter of going back to each group, the, reg um, the voter registration information, and contacting them by phone using a simple random sample or a systematic 1 and K random sample within each group. Okay, that's really all there is to um, stratified random sampling. In the next video, we're going to start a new topic, and we'll take a look at the learning objectives associated with graphical displays of data. So far, we've taken a look at some terminology so we can communicate with each other. We looked at different types of designs. We've looked at how to collect data. Now we need to start thinking in terms of once I have the data, what do I do with it? Graphical design or graphical displays is typically one of the first things that you'll do with your data.